So recently at Tech Yes City, we made a video on Linux versus Windows. And in fact, after this video, I'm going to go back and change the title of that video to my journey into Linux, because essentially that's what it was. It was a journey and I made some mistakes. The first mistake I made was that I didn't enable Steam compatibility mode, which if you're on Linux and you've got Steam and you want to play a lot of different games, you would want to enable this because it enables those games that were only meant to run on Windows, for instance, to then be able to run on Linux, whichever distro you want to use. Now, more on the distros later, but that was the first mistake I made. And the second mistake I made was that I was talking about it being emulation when it's in fact more translation with a thing known as DXVK or DirectX over Vulkan. Now, this is the magic that makes all these Windows games work on Linux. And in fact, the more I digged into it, and thank you guys too as well for the comments, because <laughs> the best sort of research you can do nowadays, I think, is a YouTube's comment section. You're going to get all the answers, and they're going to be overwhelmingly good, because the best answers are going to get the most upvotes. And so that just saved me a lot of time, where we're back here two days later, and we've got the Linux gaming all mastered. And we're going to share the results with you here today. But one thing was we went after this video was we downloaded a thing called Bazite. And this was a very popular OS recommended in the comments. Now, this one was even better than Pop OS, at least if you want flexibility, because there is so much you can do with it. You can make it for not just AMD and NVIDIA, if you've got those GPUs, but also there's a Battle Mage option there which enables you to use the Battlemage GPUs if you are a bit of a beginner at Linux. So it's going to have it all installed, ready to go. Now, there's also the choice between Steam OS with Bazite as well as a typical Windows-like desktop experience. I chose initially the Steam OS, thinking the Bazite would fix the problems. And here is where it actually, at this point in time, Steam OS itself has this VSync limit in place. So this is the first problem we came into in that it wasn't really a problem if you're using handhelds because you're going to want this sort of vsync limit on to save power but this is where on a desktop high performance machine especially if you want to play some competitive multiplayer titles you're going to want this off for the best latency and the highest uh, frame draw and here's where all the games on this steam os bazite version had this vsync hard locked didn't matter if i had the frame capped unlocked didn't matter if i had vsync turned off it would just then put in an artificial limit over all this that apparently has been embedded into the Steam OS in the last few months. And people had before that a way to get around it, but that's apparently been locked out. So I couldn't get around this lock no matter what I did. But one good thing that the Bazite install did do was that it now gave me my native 4K resolution. And that was the unlock, I guess, from Bazite. So I'm guessing that the Bazite version of the SteamOS at this point in time does have better compatibility, if I were to make that assumption. An assumption, just going to put that out there. But let's get into where I did start chasing success now. And this was with a Windows-like desktop experience of Bazite, both for NVIDIA and AMD. Here we had no hard VSync limit, except for one particular game, which we'll talk about a bit later. But let's get into all these gaming numbers and everything Linux versus Windows right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't want to spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. For a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. But let's start off now with Cyberpunk 2077. And here's where on the AMD side of things, we got practically the same results. There wasn't a whole lot of a difference here between the numbers. And now I know people are going to say, why don't you have the uh, Mango HUD display open when you're testing these results on Linux? The difference here was that I did get it working. I had it all set up and I was like, cool, this is going to be great. But then I started to uh, start recording the desktop numbers 
and started logging them and I did notice there was a little bit of stuttering. So I'll show you guys on the screen what I'm talking about here. So I just decided to leave the results vanilla versus vanilla with these games in their inbuilt benchmarks. And that was when we were gonna get actually some really good insight into how Linux performs. And ultimately I'm able to make a good conclusion here for you guys and give you guys a good recommendation based off this. And here is where we had uh, 4K 62 on Windows 10 versus 60. So they're virtually the same FPS on the 7900 XTX at 4K. Going to 1440p, we had 127 versus 131. So at 1440p, the 7900 XTX did better than it did at 4K. So Linux was scoring the win. And we know if we go to 1440p from 4K, we're actually a little bit more CPU bound. And so that's a really good thing to see with Linux. Basically, the OS itself, in my opinion, even though it's just one game, we're seeing that it is less resource hungry than Windows, even Windows 10, which is much better, in my opinion, than Windows 11. So let's look on the NVIDIA side for this game. And here is where the performance was significantly behind at 4K. 64 average FPS on ultra settings versus 74 on Windows 10 with higher minimums on the Windows side. I also did decide to test out ray tracing on this game and it was uh, significantly worse on both AMD and Nvidia for ray tracing. So let's move over now to Rift Breaker where the Nvidia side, this was the most interesting result I've seen yet because on the Nvidia side at 4K, we actually scored the same result pretty much on FPS. So this was the first time I've seen the NVIDIA result come really close on Linux versus Windows. This is the only benchmark where you'll actually see this. So that was pretty cool to see. The AMD side, it was actually uh, lagging behind a bit. So this was kind of like a reverse situation. Someone pulled a Uno reverse card on me when I was benchmarking and surprisingly the NVIDIA card did better in Rift Breaker. And then at 1440p, the trend continued here, except the numbers were a little bit different on the NVIDIA side. So a little bit worse again. So kind of a weird result in Rift Breaker. But regardless, Rift Breaker was now working absolutely fine, as opposed to when I tried to boot it on the Steam OS, it had some problems. Then we'll go over to Black Myth Wukong, because this is a pretty recent title, and it's one of the later titles and I was really surprised to see on the AMD side that the numbers were almost the same, both at 4K and at 1440p. Then we go over to the Nvidia side, they were actually uh, lagging behind significantly at 1440p, and then at 4K they were a bit behind too. Then the last title we've got up here is Strange Brigade. And here is where I actually, on the NVIDIA side, it booted up fine, everything worked okay. But then on the AMD side, I actually had a bit of problems getting this game to boot. And there was one problem with the 1440p results initially, but then the 4K results had a problem too. But to get this to work, I had to then manually select the Proton 9.0 and it booted up fine. Because before that, it was just crashing, it kept crashing. But then I booted it up with uh, selecting Proton 9. And that worked fine. Then at 4K, here's where we had the numbers coming ahead for the NVIDIA GPU on Windows 10, 280 versus 258. Then at 1440p, it was in a similar sort of 521 versus 449. Then on the AMD side, here is where at 1440p, initially we had this hard VSync lock just coming back into play, except it wasn't a VSync lock. It was a 120 <laughs> FPS lock. And I don't know what's going on here because my test bench has a 60 hertz monitor. I mean, maybe at 1440p it thinks it's a 120 hertz. I don't know what was going on exactly here, but we then managed to unlock that by changing it to window mode. And here's in window mode, it performed with a higher average FPS of 355 versus 350. So there was another dub for the AMD 7900 XTX. But then going to 4K, this 120 hertz V-Sync limit, it just would not go away. I couldn't get it to disappear. So the win went to Windows 10. And at 4K, this monitor runs at 60 hertz. There's no way to get 120 hertz out of this monitor at 4K. So don't really know exactly what's going on there. So with all those numbers done, it's time to make some, what I feel is some solid conclusions here without any mistakes. And what I can conclude from these numbers is that AMD GPUs are virtually the same performance as the Windows counterpart drivers. In other words, if you go over to Linux on an AMD graphics card, 
at least with an RX, say 580 or later, you're going to have a pretty good experience. There is going to be some games with some teething issues, but most of the games from Windows that you're used to playing will actually work on the Steam OS, or in this case, the Linux base with Steam compatibility mode on, and you're actually going to get a pretty good experience. Now, another thing on top of that is that some of the games can run even better as we showed in today's results. There is some uh, case scenarios where it does run better than Windows. And then also if we look at Marvel Rivals, that's an online competitive multiplayer game that ran better on Linux than it did on Windows 10. But then we go over to the Nvidia side and pretty much across the board, there was uh, significant losses or just losses. And you may be thinking, why is this? And that's actually got to do with the fact that NVIDIA has the whole container and their driver source locked down. And now after doing these results here today, I actually start to understand a lot more about the whole Linux versus Windows versus NVIDIA versus AMD thing. And in fact, another thing that came out of today's video was understanding the Intel driver package with the DXVK. So essentially, a lot of people have said that Intel is using the source code of this DXVK translation, and they're using that in their drivers to make compatibility for DX9, 10, and 11 games work seamlessly on Windows. So in other words, on Windows, you're actually going to be using Vulkan for the older titles on Intel Battlemage, and so that explains the performance drop versus, say, NVIDIA and AMD cards where they're optimizing those drivers just for that game. So that's the big difference with Battle Mage there, is that they're actually using this source code from DXVK in their drivers to make their games work, I guess, in a broad range of games, at least on Windows. But also with NVIDIA, locking down the source code means that they can't implement the drivers seamlessly into Linux, and so it is causing issues with, I guess, one thing that we can see from today's results, is unlocking the full potential of the performance. So those were a couple of eye-openers for me. And actually using Linux, you'll probably notice in the background, I got the Pop! OS background there. I actually ended up after all these experiments, just trying Pop! OS again and really liking it. Because in the initial video I did, I could have just enabled Steam compatibility mode in Pop! OS and things would have worked relatively the same as they did in Bazite. But I really liked the desktop user experience in Pop! OS. So, Coming out of this, I'm still going to recommend my favorite distro to try if you're getting into uh, Linux as a desktop user would be actually give Pop! OS a try. Then you can try Bazite as well. Probably try them at the same time, but definitely try them on just a smaller separate SSD. Give it a go first and see if it's for you. It'd be one thing that I'd recommend people do in their spare time. Because one thing I've noticed with Linux is it has come a long way, especially since when I tested it years and years ago with like, I think I did like a Dota 2 test. And this time around, the learning curve wasn't as hard. However, that said, up until now, it's been all good about Linux. Now we're going to talk about still coming out of this, the bad. And that is a lot of these competitive multiplayer titles, especially the really popular ones. Like we're talking Fortnite, especially Valorant. And then if we look at other titles that are very popular online, like GTA 5, these games just don't work on Linux still. And that's due to the anti-cheat mechanisms involved in the games. Now, this unfortunately is, I think, the biggest hurdle from getting the masses to adopt Linux. And the reason being is because a lot of people just want to play these games and they're very popular. So for me personally, I can't sell gaming PCs with Linux on them at this point in time because... If people want to play Valorant, GTA 5, and Fortnite, there's basically half my potential customer base already gone. So I think that in itself is probably the biggest hurdle still facing Linux and getting it to just be mass adopted at this stage. Because the compatibility mode on Steam, that actually is working extremely well. But also the NVIDIA drivers losing performance if you're on an NVIDIA card, especially in some games, 20%, that's a huge chunk of performance. So at this stage, it's more so that AMD cards and Linux is actually a pretty good experience, but then you're not going to be able to play some of those really popular multiplayer games due to the anti-cheat. So that's the biggest hurdle facing Linux at this point in time, but the fact that they've got Steam now behind them, Valve, 
that's huge. And you'll notice that things are getting fast tracked very quickly now that the Steam Deck has been out for a while. And again, Valve is making things happen really fast, really quick. And so I wouldn't be surprised if in a year's time even, these anti-cheat things were circumvented or at least patched and a lot of these popular multiplayer titles were able to work. That would really stick it to Windows, especially with the fact that Windows 10 is getting abandoned and a lot of people are getting forced onto Windows 11. Now in that regard in itself, I will be making a tech yes way of getting around that. I'll bring that video out at least in the next maybe month, two months. It's something that I'm testing right now, but there is a way around it for sure if you wanna stay on Windows 10 because Windows 10 is pretty awesome. Anyhow, guys, with all that aside, that is my Linux journey done for now. It's been a great little journey. Thank you guys as well so much in the comment sections, the people that emailed at me as well, just guiding me through everything and helping me get into uh, Linux and getting the best content available done so people can perhaps think about adopting Linux or at least giving it a try. Though as for me personally, I'm gonna have a separate drive in one of my PCs where I can play around with the Pop! OS sometimes and perhaps even game on it and just check out the latency differences because it's one thing that I feel is that when it's a resource-rich updated kernel like Linux, it is going to perform better than Windows in certain ways. The last thing is for me personally, I am going to have a separate drive with a Linux, the Pop! OS petition installed. I'm just going to try and use that in my free time from time to time and perhaps even game on it because Dota 2 is supported on Linux and that's mainly the most played game I play. Dota 2, 2012 release, 2025. Man, I'm playing a game that's 13 years old. Anyhow, guys, with all that aside, I'll put the links in the description below for all the stuff that we talked about here today. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below. And we've got some really juicy content coming out very soon, especially if you need to use PC parts, as well as some RTX 5090 content. So look forward to giving you guys all that and then some, and I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.